Hello, in this video, I'm gonna give myself a headache, I can tell already, but I'm here to describe to you a problem called the minimum spanning tree. <laughs> it's a problem from uh, computational geometry kind of thing. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna describe that problem. We're gonna look at a solution to that problem known as Prim's algorithm. Uh, named for somebody named Prim, presumably. Uh, and uh, then we'll implement it in P5.js. And as always, I will also upload a processing version of this as well, but I'm gonna use uh, P5.js to actually write the code. So first, let me just show you, before I describe to you what the actual problem is and the solution, let's just look, I have a simple example preset that's gonna, that's the, the foundation for what we need. So if I just look at the code for this example for a second, first, there's just an array, a blank array, calling it vertices, because every time I click the mouse, I'm gonna create a vector, a vector being an object that stores an X and a Y. So I'm gonna create a vector with mouse X, mouse Y, where the mouse is, and then I'm going to add that vector to an array, and then you can see in draw here, I'm just drawing an ellipse for every single one of those vertices. So if I run this program and I click, you can see here that uh, every time I click, a vector gets added to that array and I draw a circle for every one of those spots. So the question is, what is, <laughs> what is the minimum spanning tree problem? And this is a temporary whiteboard that I'm going to see how it works. So bear with me, please. Um, what is the problem? How, what, what is this problem once you have these points? <laughs> so let's say you have the points and I'm gonna make some random points. The minimum spanning tree problem says, how can I connect every single one of these points? Every single one of these points must be connected to another point, and if I add up all the distances, I have the smallest amount of distance. So there's lots of ways that I could connect them all, like I could just do this, and they're all connected, but I could also have done this, and they're still all connected. And I could have also done this, and they're still all connected. And if I, at least I made these pretty evenly spaced out. So probably, if I, oh boy, this is scary. Probably if I were to draw a diagram like this, um, uh, and then if I put another one here, right? They're all connected like this, but that's probably, if I add up those distances, it's gonna be a lot greater than if I connected them like this. So, uh, and it doesn't have to be a closed shape, it doesn't have to be a continued path. The only thing that has to happen is that every single point has to, you have to be able to get from every point to every other point somehow. So this is the kind of application that you could probably create some kind of interesting visual art project out of, but it's used, it's, you know, it's, it's a relevant, it has practical applications. For example, if you wanted to connect everything with some kind of like electricity or telephone, telephone, people use those anymore, telephone signal, you know, and you only had a certain amount of cable, like what's the way to have them all connected and you're, using the, you're saving the most money using the least amount of cable. And I'm sure you could come up with all sorts of other scenarios for where this is relevant. So how do you solve this problem? Okay, so there's a variety of different solutions to this problem, some of which are more efficient, some of which are less efficient, some of which do it you know, um, more quickly or less quickly, but the solution I'm gonna show you, sorry, is called uh, Prim's algorithm. And it works as follows. What if we start with a random point, essentially? Let's start with this random point, okay? Now, what if what we do, and we have this, I'm gonna introduce this idea of an unreached verte vertex or a reached vertex. So at the start, all of the vertices are unreached. There's no line connected to it. They're all unreached vertices. I can't get the telephone signal to them. And we're going to start with one single, and this is now a reached vertex. So what I want to do is say, okay, what can I connect this one to that has the least distance? So this particular vertex, I can check every other one, and I can see, and I check the distance, and this one actually has the least distance. So now I have two reached vertices. This one is reached and this one is reached. Now what I need to do is the same thing. I need to find not just the one that's closest to this one, but the one that's the least distance between this one or this one. So in other words, if, if this were here, I, but you know, this is a little bit longer than this, but shorter than this and this, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and connect this here. But 
if this one is if this one is closer than this one, I'm going to go ahead and connect this. Now I need to say, is this shorter than this, than this, than this, or this, and this? So every I have to check every single reached vertex against every unreached vertex and find whichever pairing has the least distance. And then that gets, and maybe, maybe right now it's this one, and all these are reached, and then maybe right now it's this one, and then maybe it's this one, and then maybe it's this one, and maybe it's this one. Now I don't know if that's exactly right, but you can see that eyeballing it, that's probably a vague solution. So this is the problem. Now let's go and write the code to solve it. <laughs> okay, I'm coming over here. Okay, so what is the first thing that we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is, is implement this idea of reached and unreached. So I'm going to create in the draw loop, I'm going to create two new arrays. One for, to store all the vertices that have been reached, and one to store all the vertices that haven't been reached. At the beginning, What's going on here? Every single vertex should go in, sorry, in unreached. So I'm going to write a loop here, so, uh, and I'm going to say unreached.push vertices index i. So this is me just essentially copying, mean, I'm sure there's a, somebody in JavaScript land can tell me a better way to copy an array into another array, but one way to do it is just say, hey, let me go through everything in this one array and put it all in this other array. So at the beginning, all the vertices, right, all the vertices are unreached, every single one. Okay, come back over here. Now, I want to pick one vertex to start being the one that's reached. I need something to go in the reached array. So I'm going to say um, var uh, start equals unreached index 0. And then I'm going to say reached dot push start. So I want to put, I, I'm sure I could, you know, whatever. This is silly to have a separate variable. I'm going to just put ah, unreached index 0, 0, not O. I'm going to put 1 the first vertex from unreached in reached, just to get us started. Okay, once we have that, I need to do something else. If I'm taking a vertex from unreached and it's going in reached, I need to remove it from unreached. So I need to say unreached splice zero. So the splice function set is like delete, delete the zero element, only I'm not done yet. The splice function wants you to say not just which element do you want to remove, but how many. So, so I want to just remove one element from that zero spot. Okay, now, now I have an algorithm. I want my algorithm to go as, I want to, the goal of this is to get everything from unreached to reached. And unfortunately, this camera shut off because I forgot to start it at the beginning of this video. So I want everything to go from unreached to reached. So here we go. I'm going to say as long as unreached dot length is greater than zero, I can keep going. So maybe there's another way in JavaScript to test if the array is empty or not. But basically what I'm saying is, as long as there are still unreached vertices, we haven't finished the algorithm yet. So every single cycle, remember, every single cycle, we need to say, what are the reached vertices? For every reached vertex, check the distance against every other unreached vertex and find the shortest distance. So in order to find a shortest distance amongst a bunch of candidates, we always have to start with something that's kind of the record. If I was trying to find the longest distance, it would be easy. i say, Does, is the distance bigger than zero? Then it's currently the longest distance. So the first thing I need to do is just come up with, I'm going to call it record, some like large number, 100,000. So there's not going to be any vertices that are more than 100,000 pixels from each other in a 640 by 360 window. Then I need to uh, say for every, uh, oh, and I probably shouldn't, no, it's okay to use I. For every vertex in the reached array, check every vertex in the unreached array. Okay, for every vertex in the reached array, check every, so for every reached vertex, check every unreached vertex. And what do I need to do? The thing that I want to know is the distance between, and let's, um, let's say v1 is reached index i, and v2 is reached index j, and I want the distance between v1.x, v1.y, to v2.x, and v2.y. 
So the core algorithm here is check every distance between every reached vertex and every unreached vertex. Now, if the distance is less than the record, then the record is the distance. So what we're doing is we're saying, I want to find what is that shortest distance. At the beginning, the shortest distance is 100,000. And the first distance is like 300. Oh, it's less than it. That's the record. Then the next one is 250. Oh, that's less than it. That's the record. Then the next one is 400. Oh, that's not the record. Then the next one is 100. Oh, that's the record. So we're doing every single one always. If we have a distance that beats the previous record, we have the record. So this is the core algorithm for finding that shortest one. But if I find that shortest one, what do I need to do? I need to store also the two vertices that are involved in that shortest distance. So I, I need to have, in addition to just um, the record, I need the reached, I'm going to call this the R index, the reached index, and the unreached index. So if this is the case, if I found that record, R index is I, that's the index from this array, and uh, U index is J. And in fact, I don't, I could actually, instead of storing the, no, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do it with the distance, <laughs> with the index. So I got those. So, so now you can see here, uh, I now am storing, I've checked every, checked every reached, every unreached, found the shortest one. And once that's done, once that's finished, what happens? I need to do exactly what I did up here, right? I need to say, put Take, take the unreached one and put it in reached and then remove it and then remove it from unreached. So this is my algorithm to, I found that new vertex, remove it from reach, move, remove it from one array and put it in another array. There's probably, I probably could like do this all in one fancy line of code, but it's nice to have it in two. And then while I'm here, <laughs> I might as well draw a line uh, uh, oh, I don't, I don't have those as global variables. That's fine. I might as well draw a line between reached r index dot x. Oh, this is going to get very long very quickly. r index dot y, and then unreached, uh, 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 unreached index dot x, unreached, unreached index dot y. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't know. Did that work? <laughs> okay, so line 45. Uh, I messed something. Oh, because you know what? I better not. Here's a problem, right? I mucked around with the arrays and then I drew the line after. So that's definitely not going to work, right? I need to, if I'm drawing the line right before I start moving them around, I should do that. So let's just see here. Okay, so we, we got kind of something happened and then, <laughs> and then something didn't happen. What? Okay. So, um, so let's think about this for a second. What, what could, so, so this is the core idea. Let's, let's review for a second. <laughs> How long have I been at this? Only 13 minutes. That's not terrible. So we started with uh, every, time we, every time there's something left in unreached, we start with a record. We have two indices. We go through everything in the reached, check it against everything in unreached. Ah, look at that. That's not right. V2 equals reached. So the point of the Second one is to pull something out of the uh, second array. That's clearly not going to work. And yeah, this looks like it's working. Look at that. And I don't like the way the lines look here, so I'm going to say stroke 255, uh, stroke weight 2, and here. And you can see, there we go. We have our minimum spanning tree as I add points. And conceivably, by the way, um, you know, if I wanted to just demonstrate this in a different way, I could say, uh, I could just add like 50 random points right when the program starts. Uh, and I could say random, just with uh, random height, and uh, do this. You can see every time I run it, we get a new, and the one thing I'll mention about this is I'm doing, in this program, you notice the whole algorithm is happening in draw. So it's recomputing the minimum spanning tree over and over and over again. It doesn't need to do that. It, but, you know, it, 
conceivably, if the points were always, every time you add or subtract a point, you would need to recompute it. And I'm, so you might be, if you were using this in something, you might be more thoughtful about only recomputing it at a certain point. The other thing I'm not doing here is this particular, like drawing is just sort of drawn and I can't do anything with it. So if I were, if I wanted to go further with this, I would probably make edge objects. So in other words, I might have an array of points or vertices or like a vertex object. I'm just using the P5 vector object with create vector. But then I might create these edge objects so they're things that I could animate or change color and put those in an array as well. You, and the place that I would do that is right here, right? Instead of just drawing a line, like I just said, I figured out the vertex, I'm just gonna draw a line there, I could actually create that edge object. All right, so this is pretty much the end of the video. I'm actually gonna look though, I don't know if people are posting, I have this, even though if you're watching this, you might be watching this like 10 years from now, um, I actually am recording this live and there are some people watching this live, so I'm gonna, you could shut this off now if you want, but I'm gonna just look and see if there's any questions. Uh, somebody points out, that, um, okay, there are two um, improvements that are pointed out in the chat, which I'll mention. Let's see if they still work. So first, I just want to make this with just 20. So one is that I could copy the array by saying uh, reached, uh, reached equals unreached, the JavaScript function concat, which I guess is like concatenate. No, but then that doesn't, it's not an array, it just joins them. I'd have to then split it or something. Um, but, and then, uh, oh, reached push unreached shift is another way to put the first one in. So people are, so there's all these other array functions, but that one's not gonna work. I'm sure there's another, somebody will put it in the comments. We'll <laughs> read the comments, I'm sure it'll be fixed in there. Um, there are all sorts of other kind of array functions. Is there anything else I'm missing here? I think we did it. I'm gonna post this code, a link to this code. Uh, please post your questions in the comments because I, I, I don't know how well this was explained or if this makes any sense at all, but I'm glad to have made a video today on Friday. It's 5.15, um, I gotta go. <laughs> Let me just look. Is the code available somewhere? Um, um, yeah, the code, uh, uh, someone asked, the, co the code is going to be, uh, there'll be a link in the description. It's not available yet if you're watching this live. I'm going to stop the recording and then talk to the live people. <laughs> okay, uh, bye. Thanks for watching this.